Hello and welcome back to Dragon Age Origins. Last time we made our way through Redcliffe Castle and we had to make a decision. And the decision led Morgan to have to go into the Fade and face a demon. So we're Morgan now. So let's see if we can Hello. save the boy. Blessed art thou who exists in the sight of the here? meek. Demon. Curse this blasted duck! You there? Have you seen my son? I can okay. I can hear him, but I cannot find him. This blasted fog has me turning in circles. This is the fade. Your kind cannot navigate it any more than you could navigate a dream. I don't understand. Where is my Connor? I will find him for you since I foolishly gave my word that I would. Leave me to it. No. No, you're trying to lead me astray. I do not believe you. Connor! Connor, where are you? Jeez, well then, no help. Connor? Is that you? Hello? Uh oh. Who are you? Are you the one that made father ill? Tell me now! Where is the demon? I do not have time for fool children. Now tell me where this demon is. Fool? You won't get near her. I won't let you. Oh boy. Oh? Oh, hi. Luscious world, mm. your soul will be mine. Spider time. Okay, that worked out pretty well. Trying out my abilities as Morgan. Uh, where do we go now? Don't go there. Can only take the path I came from. I shall do it. You, you're the one making father sick. That's not true. Am I dead? Am I dreaming? I don't what? understand. It. Why do you keep hurting me? Why are you trying to stop me? Grespasov. I will drive you out! That's not nice. Come to me, pretty thing! <laughs> you will learn to fear me! There we go. I'll oh, help him! Pretty powerful. You can't stop me! I like it. Get out of here! You have to get out! Hey, Connor. Father wonders, seeking me, trapped within my web. All is as it should be. Why must you interfere? No. It is time for you to go now. Do not persist, or things will go very badly for you. I will savor your every curve and gash! Hmm. As you wish. You have no hope, Red It is too easy. Oof. Take some considerable damage, though. 
take a breather. Oh boy. I just go there, okay? Very no. well. No more illusions. Oh, hi. Now we meet face to face. You see my true form and stand in my domain. It is here I am most powerful. Mm. And yet I have no wish to engage your power, nor should you be so eager to engage mine. Perhaps we should converse instead? Do you take me for a fool? I know better than to bargain with your kind. Alas, that is sad. Very well then. If you wish a battle, you will have it. Let us see if your power matches your boldness, creature. Likewise. How about demon of horror? That's not good. Or horror demon? I don't know. Oh, she she did a thing. I shall do it. Oh. Ah. Love it. That's some good. Ooh. Oh no. do it. Oh. Why must this? Oh. As you wish. Okay, that was a good good damage. You're in life. Okay, got her. Come on, one more. Tis too ah. easy. Heh. <laughs> no, I want delirium vein. So it is over. Connor is his old self. He does not seem to remember anything, which is a blessing. I suppose we will need to send him to the Circle of Magi's Tower for... training, once the war is over. It's so odd to think of the boy as a mage, of all things. Should Eamon recover? I'm not sure how I will tell him of all this. Isolde is dead, yet her sacrifice saved their son. There is still the matter of Jowan. He performed the ritual and did not deceive us. In a way, he saved Connor's life even though he killed his soul. I am unsure what to make of this. We will hold him for Eamon to decide his fate. If he doesn't recover, Jowan's fate is sealed. What do you think? Uh... Hmm. 
Why do you want my opinion? It was your decision to use his ritual. You had some reason to trust him. I thought you'd have an opinion on his fate. Would you find him useful? I would not trust him, but I would not presume to tell my brother what to do. Uh... I don't think it's your decision to make. What do you mean? He is responsible for many of the problems here, and is a Malefica as well. Uh... Perhaps you're right. Very well. I shall have the mage imprisoned again, for now. But our task is not done yet. Whatever the demon did to my brother, I think it that's seems fair because his life, but he all things considered, comatose. we cannot wake him. The mage as did try to seem, kill. The quest is old. Sent the knights on. Eamon. May be our only hope. We must find the urn of sacred ashes. So, um, he did try to kill all Eamon. That happened before the whole um, business with the demon. So then, if I understand it correctly, Connor. Wanted to strike a deal with the demon to save his father, which then led to all the abomination business, and uh, that is when Isolde put him in prison. In the prison, and we saved him from the prison, not because we thought that he was necessarily innocent, but because we didn't really find it fair for him to like rot in a cell surrounded by. We had corpse monsters, and also because we thought that he might be useful, he then was useful uh, and in a way redeemed himself. But I think it is fair to let Al Eamon decide once or if he recovers what to do with the, with the mage. Isn't there some other way? It has been tried, and we will continue trying. Perhaps the demon's absence will make a difference. However, the relic is another option. Eamon funded the research of a Denerim scholar, a brother Genetivi. He has been trying to decipher the inscriptions on Andraste's birth rock. When Eamon fell ill, Isolde sent her knights to Genetivi in the hopes that he had finally discovered the location of Andraste's final resting place. They were unable to find him. In desperation, Isolde sent others in search of the brother or some clue of the urn's location. Um... I will see if I can find the relic. No one else can. Because we want Even if the I wish to do it support myself, of our I cannot Eamon abandon Redcliffe why to we its own devices. To Perhaps you could seek place. out the brother's home in Denerim and see if any clues remain on his whereabouts. It is the only place to begin the search, I think. I must go to the hall and begin rebuilding. I wish you luck, and may the Maker go with you. Okay. Let's level up. Morrigan two in magic one in willpower Ooh. well let's go hmm. no previous let's take combat tactics shape shifting into a bear that doesn't seem too bad here for the basic uh, basic heal. I don't think I will go further. Cane bolt. Let's go further in her shapeshifter form. Um. Can we go to tactics? Du -du -du -du. Morgan. Damager. Ally. Health is below fifty. Try and heal or twenty five. Let's do that. Okay. There's all Eamon. I think 
else in here. Doesn't seem that way. Well, that was quite quite the thing, wasn't it? Kind of feel sorry for pushing Morgan to have to go into the fate. I'm not sure if there was an option for me to ask her for it. Uh, if so, I didn't see it. Let's talk to Connor. You're the one who saved me. Actually, it was Morgan. Then, I guess I owe her thanks. Father always said to remember to thank people who do nice things for you. I wish Mother were here. Nobody will tell me how she died. They say I'll find out when I'm older. Uh, yeah. Awkward. Let's leave. Let's leave before it gets more awkward. But we saved the city! Yay! Uh, a vault? Allow me. I could do that for you. I doubt you can. I have better skills than you. So, how about now? Anything in here? Just wonder if there's anything to loot. There's something to loot. Very well. Ice arrows. That could come in handy. If we fight something fiery again. Yes. Or just something strong where I need some additional firepower. Gift. The Garrens of Feralden, a uh, genealogical history. Hmm. As nope. you say. This is the main floor. I do want to look around because sometimes in these places there are all kinds of. Well, oh, that is the will be done. There are all do kinds of uh, gifts hidden or sometimes just books for codex entries. Of course. I remember that there are certain special gifts uh, who we will have to find in order to have certain quests. So, I'm looking for that. Alistair's mother's amulet, for example. We will be able to give that to him once we get back to camp. I mean, I, c I could give him uh, the amulet now, I think, but I think we wait until we have a quiet moment. You, you didn't bother to scoop up the remains of the soldiers here now? Let's talk to Ban Tegan. You return. Might you have news? What is all Eamon's condition? Unchanged, I'm afraid. We've tried more magical healing, but nothing works. As time passes, I become more and more convinced the urn might be our only hope. Yes, but they are returning slowly. No doubt the war's progress, as well as the Darkspawns, hinders many of them. Okay. Then I must resume my duties. The civil war continues, and Loghain is no doubt angered Redcliffe has not been disabled. Good luck, my friend. I hope this continues to go well, for all our sakes. Me, too. And Very please well. don't... Don't do the whole abomination business again. Oh, it's kind of messy. People died. Not sure if he noticed. Vanity. More ice arrows. That's good. Okay, another gift. Also almost overburdened, but... Uh, not too mu too much left to explore. So, all good.
goes to the courtyard. We'll be able to sell a bunch of stuff once I get to the next merchant. Oh, this is actually... We were here before, yeah, I remember. There in the back we found Valena. Okay, I think we are... Ready to leave. That was the armory. I think, yeah, I never entered this room. I think. Three of the Chantry, Chapter Two. Okay. All righty. Uh, now, how do I get out of here? Uh, there. Okay. Should talk to the blacksmith since we found Valena. I hope she got out safely. Need to sell some stuff. Probably should catch up with the locals if there's something new. Oh, that actually leads us to the world map. Well, let's first go to Redcliffe Village. Just go back into the village. Kind of finish up our business there. Oh. I bring word, sire. There are demands from the Banorn that you step down from the Regency. They are said to be gathering their forces, as are your allies. It appears it will be civil war after all, despite the Darkspawn. Pity. I also have an interesting report. There seem to be Grey Wardens who survived Ostagar. How, I don't know. But they will act against you. I have arranged for a... a solution. With your leave. The Antivan Crows send their regards. An assassin? Against Grey Wardens, we will need the very best, <laughs> And the most expensive. Just get it done. Oh, nice. Now he sends assassins after us. Lovely. And a new codex entry for Zevran. Okay. Knight Commander Harith. I'm sure if I met him before. Move along, friend. Very well. Thank you. Okay. Nice talking to you. Okay, let's get down. Looks so peaceful now. Kind of. Oh, another quest there, but... Before we pick that up, let's go to the smith. Check in with these two. My Valena returned. She told me of your daring rescue. I can't begin to tell you how grateful I am. Take this. A reward for your deed. 
It's dwarven made and should serve you well. Thank you. I was glad to help. Thank you again. I'm forever in your debt. You're welcome here, friend. What can I do for you? Let's talk business. You're welcome to whatever I have, obviously. I'm at your service. See how friendly he is now? Okay, I guess we can get rid of some things here, right? Like a basic dagger, another basic dagger. Uh, ooh. Mace, longbow, shortbow. Now, Oathkeeper, we keep great sword. Hmm. Let's clear these out. They're not that special. Shielded Dwarven Armor. That sounds good. So we will keep that. Hmm. Electricity resistance, cold resistance, chain more boots. I want to keep some of them just because I need armor for Stan, or at least want to check if Stan can use it. Mm, okay. Other than that, does he have anything special? Some runes. Battle Axe. Not sure if it's really worth it. But at least we're not overburned anymore. Let's talk to Valena. Thank you, kind sir. I'd never have been able to return to my father if it wasn't for you. You are welcome. Yes. Let's leave. Let's check uh, what kind of new quest there is. Pick that up. Blessed are the peacekeepers, champions of the just. Oh, if it, what kind of quest did we do? Finish some kind of quest. Very well. Nothing new here. Okay, I think that takes care of that. And I don't think we have much more in Redcliffe. Conquest, Blackstone Regulus, Colum uh, Summer Mile, Lake Colum Hart, Denerim, Frostback Mountains, Never Notices, Alpha Prairie, appreciated to five hooded couriers in Denerim. Uh, chant is bore, travel to the trade route, marked on your map. Uh, company marked on your map. Desperate Haven. Flight all of Redcliffe. Revive all Eamon, gain Ozamar. Uh -huh, okay. Premium content, Soldier's Pass, Told Merchant, Soldier's Peak. Offer to take you through the maze of tunnels that lead to the old uh, Soldier's Peak. And King's Confidant, Journey to Ben Lauren's Land. Osaga, Prisons of Ben Lauren. Okay. Okay. What do we have here? Desire Demon. In all my studies, I must say that the most intriguing was my interview with the Desire Demon. That the creature was willing to speak with me was a sign that this was no mere monster mindlessly driven by its nature, but rather a rational being as interested in me as, it, as I was in it. It took a form that I would call female, though I had no doubt that it could appear otherwise. I wondered if it appeared as it did because I wanted it to, or because I expected it to. She... And indeed, I could only think of her 
as such now, smiled warmly at me and loved a musical sound that seemed to thrill my old heart. So frightened was I of this creature's legendary abilities to twist the hearts of men and so relieved was I when I looked across the table into the dark eyes. This was a fearsome creature of the fate, but as I spoke with her I slowly came to realize that this demon was merely as misunderstood as we mages are ourselves. From the journey of former senior enchanter Malleus, once of the Circle of Ruvain declared apostate 920 dragon. Of all the threats from beyond the veil, few are more insidious and deceptively deadly than the desire demon. In folklore, such demons are characterized as peddlers of lust luring their prey into a sexual encounter only to be slain at the culmination. While a desire demon can indeed deal in pleasure, in truth they deal with any manner of desire that humans can possess. Wealth, power and beauty to name a few. Far more intelligent than the bestial hunger and rage demons and more ambitious than the demons of sloth, these dark spirits are among the most skilled at tempting mages into possession. Many who serve the whims of a desire demon never realize it. They are manipulated by illusions and deceit, if not outright mind control. Although these demons are reluctant to resort to such crude measures, instead they seem to take great pleasure in corruption. They, the greater uh, the deceit, the greater their victory. Only demons of pride prove more fearsome opponents when roused. Their abilities to affect the mind allow them to assume disguises and even alter the environment to their purposes, not to mention the greater strength and speed they possess if they should have to resort to more physical means. Most often a desire demon will attempt to bargain its way into freedom. If overpowered, many stories exist that depict mages defeating desire demons to the point where a wish can be wrested from them. It should be noted that in such stories the demon almost always gets the upper hand, even when the mage thinks his wish was, has been granted. Encountered in the Fade, the true form of a rage demon is a frightening sight, a thing of pure fire, its body seemingly made out, made of amorphous lava and its eyes two pinpricks of baleful light radiating from its core. The abilities of such a demon center on the fire it generates. It burns those who come near and the most powerful of its kind are able to lash out with bolts of fire and even firestorms that can affect entire areas. Fortunately, even powerful rage demons are less intelligent than most other varieties. Their tactics are simple. Attack an enemy on sight with as much force as possible until it perishes. Some rage demons carry over their heat-based abilities into possessed hosts, but otherwise the true form is mostly seen outside of the fate when it's specifically summoned by a mage to do his bidding. Revenant, an entire unit of men, all slain by one creature. I didn't believe it at first. You're perfection but it appears that this is so we have a survivor and while at first i thought his rantings pure exaggeration it appears to be no simple skeleton the description of the creature's abilities were eerily similar to those our brothers at marna's pal encountered almost a century ago men pulled through the air to skewer themselves on the creature's blade and attack so quick that it was able to assault multiple opponents at once. No, your perfection, what we have here is indeed a revenant and nothing else. From a letter to Divine Amara the Third. The Revenant is a corpse possessed by a demon of pride or of desire, making it amongst the most powerful possessed opponents that one can face. Many possess spells, but most are armed and armored and prefer the use of the martial talents. They are weak against physical attacks, but regenerate quickly and commonly use telekinesis to pull opponents into melee range should they try to flee. Revenants also have the ability to strike multiple opponents surrounding them. Stay at range if possible and strike quickly. That is the only way to take such a creature down. Magic and religion. Apostates. It is not uncommon for uh, the neophyte to mistake apostates and maleficarum as one and the same. Indeed, the Chantry has gone to great length over the centuries to establish that this is so. The truth, however, is that while an apostate is often a maleficar, he 
need not to be so. A Maleficar is a mage who employs forbidden knowledge such as blood magic and the summoning, summoning of demons, whereas an apostate is merely any mage who does not fall under the auspices of the Circle of Major and therefore the Chantry. They are hunted by the Templars and quite often will turn to forbidden knowledge in order to survive, but it would be a lie to say that all apostates begin that way. Historically, apostates become such in one of two ways. They are either mages who have escaped from the circle or, or mages who were never part of it to begin with. This latter category includes what we tend to refer to as hedge mages, those with magical abilities out in the hinterlands who follow a different magical tradition than our own. Some of the hedge mages are not even aware of their nature. Undeveloped their abilities can express themselves in a variety of ways, ways which the hedge mage might attribute to faith or will or to another being entirely depending on his nature. Some of these traditions are passed down from generation to generation, as with the so-called witches of the Chesant Wilders or the shamans of the Var Barbarians. No matter how a mage has become apostate, the Chantry treats them alike. Templars begin a systematic hunt to bring the apostate to justice. In almost all cases, justice is execution. If there is some overriding reason the mage should live, the right of tranquility is employed instead. Whether we of the Circle of Major believe this system fair is irrelevant, it is what it is. Patterns with them formed by Holden, first enchanter of Starkhaven. Blood magic, the forbidden school. Foul and corrupt are you who have taken my gift and turned it against my children. Transfiguration 8010. The ancient Tevinters did not originally consider blood magic a school of its own, rather they saw it as a means to achieve greater power in any school of magic. The name of course refers to the fact that magic of this type uses life specifically in the form of blood instead of mana. It was, commonly, uh, it was common practice at one time for a magister to keep a number of slaves on hand, so that should he undertake the working of a spell that was physically beyond his abilities, he could use the blood of his slaves to bolster the casting. Over time, however, the Imperium discovered types of spells that could only be worked by blood. Although Lyrium will allow a mage to send his conscious mind into the fate, blood would allow him to find the sleeping minds of others, view their dreams and even influence or dominate their thoughts. Just as treacherous blood magic allows the veil to be opened completely so that demons may physically pass through it into our world. The rise of the Chant of Light and the subsequent fall of the Old Imperium has led to blood magic being all but stamped out as it should be for it poses nearly as great a danger to those who would practice it as the world at large. From the Four Schools, a treatise by First Enchanter Josephus. Characters. Connor Garen. I feel like I'm sleeping, but I guess I'm not. While most of the bands and alls of Ferelden caught their children with them to the lands meet in the interest of eventual, eventually marrying them off, Connor has spent his entire life at Redcliffe, and it's hardly surprising the child possessed the gift of magic. By law, he should have been taken to the Circle of Magi at the first sign. Abdic abdicating his claim to Ratcliffe. Instead, the boy was kept out of public view and his magic hushed up with disastrous results. All mages are be beacons that attract the attention of fate spirits. Because of this, they are trained and tested by the circle to ensure that they can withstand attacks from malevolent fate creatures that seek entry into the waking world. Untrained Connor drew the attention of a powerful demon that tore the veil asunder. With aid from the circle, he was freed from the demon's power. Connor uh, will be sent to the circle tower where he will no longer pose danger to the innocent. Al Rendon Howe. It appears it will be civil war after all, despite the darkspawn pity. So that was the second hand guy. Uh, that we saw in the cutscene. The Arling of Amaranthine 
winds along the sinuous northeastern coast of Ferelden. The Waking Sea is known for its temper and the storms that sweep in from the warmer northern waters are sudden and brutal. These are the lands of Rendon Howe. He was born during the occupation and like many of the nobles at the time joined Prince Merrick's rebels. He fought alongside young Bryce Cowsland future turn of Hyever and Leonas Bryland, future Earl of Southreach, and the bloody battle of uh, at the bloody battle of White River. It was the most catastrophic defeat of the entire occupation, from which only fifty rebel soldiers escaped alive. Although he was decorated for valor by King Merrick, how's abrasive manners have earned him almost universal dislike among his peers. Alessa is old. The Arling Oh, the, uh, we read that. Uh, there. When her only son began to show signs of possessing magic, Isolde tried to cover it up, knowing that he would be taken from her by the circle if found out. She hired an apostate mage to tutor him in secret, little knowing that her tutor was being paid to poison her husband. Even fell ill and Connor desperate tried to use magic to save his father, magic that attracted the attention of a demon. The circle of magi were finally called in almost too late and Connor was freed from the demon's power, though the damage to Radcliffe was severe. So I guess now that we read it in two different codex entries, the Circle of Major claimed to be the one saving Connor. That's interesting. Loghain McTeer. His actions sparked a civil war. Loghain's supporters found themselves fighting their neighbors who blamed Loghain for the death of the king, as well as those who simply wished to take advantage of the power vacuum. Zevran Arainai, the crows sent their regards. Between the Tevinter Imperium, Ravain and the Free Marchers sits the nation of Antiva. Although it possesses few resources of its own, Antiva's location makes it a center for trade in the north and the capital, Antiva City, is the wealthiest in the world. Antiva has virtually no army, the monarchy is too weak to support one. Most Antivans would be hard pressed even to name the current king, as the true power lies in the hands of a dozen merchant princes, each with a personal army and each locked in a constant struggle for power against all others. Anyone would think then that Antiva would be a ripe target for invasion by one of the, her neighbors. But even the Kunari leave Antiva alone for one very good reason, the House of Crows. The most efficient, most feared, and most expensive guild of assassins in the world called, calls Antiva their home, and their reputation alone defends the borders. Books and Songs History of the Chantry, Chapter 2. When the prophet Andraste and her husband Mafarath arrived at the head of their barbarian hordes, uh, southern Tevinta was thrown into chaos. The Imperium had uh, defeated, defended against invasion in the past, but now they stood without the protection of their gods, with their army in tatters and their country devastated by the blight. Many felt that the timing of the invasion was yet another of the Maker's miracles in Andraste's campaign to spread his divine word. Andraste was more than simply the wife of a warlord, after all. She was also the betrothed of the Maker, enraptured by the melodic sound of her voice as she sang to the heavens for guidance. The Maker himself appeared to Andraste and proposed that she come with him, leaving behind the flawed world of humanity. In her wisdom, Andraste pleased pleaded with the Maker to return to his people and create paradise in the world of men. The Maker agreed, but only if all of the world would turn away from the worship of false gods and accept the Maker's divine commandments. And with the knowledge of the one true God, Andrasa began the exalted march into the weakened Imperium. One of uh, the Maker's commandments, that magic should serve men rather than rule over him, was as honey to the souls of the downtrodden of Tevinter who lived under the thumbs of the magisters. Word of Andrasa's exalted march of her miracles and military success sis, <laughs> spread far and wide. Those in the Imperium who felt the old gods had abandoned them eagerly listened to the words of the Maker. Those throngs of restless citizens that destroyed temples now that 
so in the name of the maker and his prophet Andraste. As Mafarath's armies uh, conquered the lands of southern Tevinta, so did Andraste's word conquer hearts. It is said that the maker smiled on the world at the Battle of Val Valerian Fields, in which the forces of Mafarath challenged and defeated the greatest army Tevinta could muster. The southern reaches of the mighty Imperium now lay at the mercy of barbarians. Faith in the maker bolstered by such miracles threaten to shake the foundations of the imperium apart of course the human heart is more powerful than the greatest weapon and when wounded it is capable of the blackest of deeds notes correspondence interrupters a collection of embarrassing pro are we uh oh that's the second part i, I guess uh We found one in the mill and one in the castle. You're filthy. It be such a depravity. I've never been forced to suffer. How uh, words are so late? But we read that. Oh, or did? Oh, I think we may have gotten the first uh, this part, and now we got the first part. I burn for you, and because of you, please use the enclosed tincture, uh, if our love is to endure. Okay. A bit confusing. Sorry, Overlord. Okay. So let's move up the hill and then we will leave Radcliffe. Probably uh, stop at our camp, talk to everyone, see how they feel about what happened, uh, dish out some gifts. And then I need to make a plan on where we go next because I have no idea. There it goes to the world map. That one up before. This is where we entered Radcliffe the first time, but this will be it for today. Thank you all for watching, and I hope that you enjoyed the episode. If you did, consider giving it a thumbs up and maybe subscribing to the channel that helps me out a bunch and will bring you more content in the future i will be back with more dragon age origins tomorrow until then have a great time